So we've said that light travels at different speeds in different materials, and different materials therefore refract light by different amounts. It will slow down by different amounts in different materials and bend by different amounts in different materials. Each material has a number called the index of refraction for that material, and that number tells how much the light slows down when it enters that material, how, how, how much slower it goes in that material than it does in empty space. And the number, the index of refraction also tells us therefore how much the light bends in that material. Now the symbol for the index of refraction is commonly N, so that's the, the letter we'll use when we do calculations with this, and sometimes you see IOR just as an abbreviation, index of refraction, just because that's kind of a lot to write but n is how it will look as a variable in the equations. IOR is just an abbreviation. Now for empty space, the index of refraction is 1. That essentially means no refraction. Light's just going in a straight line. For other materials, when light slows down, n has a larger number. For example, in water, n is equal to 1.33. And looking at these two numbers can give you an indication of how much light slows down when it goes from empty space into water. Its speed in empty space is going to be 1.33 times as great as it was in the water. And here's a chart showing the indices of refraction for some various materials. Now for empty space, n is equal to 1, and look at the value here for air. N is 1.0003. Light travels almost as fast through air as it does through empty space. And in most cases, we're going to use this value, 1.0003, but just round it to 1. The only time we're going to use these extra digits is if we're calculating a refraction from empty space to air. In that case, those digits would matter. That 3 would really make a big difference. If we're just calculating the index, calculating the refraction of light from air into water, for example, which would be very common, because that's one that we always see every time you pour a glass of water or look into a pool or something, the index of refraction for air will call that 1, and water will call 1.33, and we're not going to be concerned about these other digits, unless we're calculating the, the refraction between air and empty space. One thing stands out on this list, and that's diamond. The index of refraction is 2.42, and that's clearly the highest on the, on the list. Diamond has unique optical properties. It will bend the light more than any other material and they're able to use that fact along with the shape in which they cut a diamond to make it sparkle in a way that other materials won't. Diamonds are typically cut like this and then there's these faces up top and different um, different faces and then it's mounted in something that, um, that holds it down here something that grips it maybe on a ring or something but light entering the diamond might bounce around inside the diamond and it's cut in a way such that almost all the light that enters it emerges from the surface. Light that comes in in the side here might bounce around inside the diamond and re-emerge from the surface. Or light coming in at an angle might bounce around inside and re-emerge from the surface. And light coming in from the bottom is also going to end up emerging from the surface. So almost all the light that hits it comes out the top. So diamonds really do sparkle more than fake diamonds. A diamond made out of glass or cubic zirconium or something like that. Diamonds really do have a different look and a different quality to them. And they're very rare. And that's what makes them expensive. And it's the high index of refraction that gives diamond its unique optical properties, as well as the way that it's cut.